Okay, Daryl, 73, great talking to you. Talk to you again soon. W-A-D-Y-E. This is 9 Victor 1, Tango Delta, Singapore. 73, old buddy. See you again soon. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Warren. 9 Victor 1, Tango Delta, in Singapore. I want to show you today how I set up a piece of software called Voice Shaper in order to give my side bend signal more punch. With this software, I can make a really cheap microphone like this Radio Shack sound like a million bucks and uh, give the sideband signal some more punch at the same time. So let me show you how I set mine up. Okay, so the first thing you have to worry about when you're setting up a speech processor is how do you sound? Uh, when your commercial rig is set up, most of them don't have any way for you to test that. Alex thought of that, and we begin by recording a five-second loop of my own voice using this microphone in the software and then we use that as a reference point for setting up all the parameters. So I'm going to say I'm going to record a five second loop and we simply uh, start the recording, click on that and here we go. This is 9 Victor 1 Tango Delta Singapore. Test 1, 2, 3. That ought to do it. Let's see how that sounds. This is 9 Victor 1 Tango Delta Singapore. Test 1, 2, 3. This is 9 Victor 1 Tango Delta Singapore. Test 1, 2, 3. Well, it doesn't sound too bad. Um, if uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, let's see, let me mute that. Let me just play that back again. Well, let's take a look at the this screen and see what we've got. Let me turn it down. So here on the screen, what you see is um, the, the starts at 30 hertz here. This is 100 hertz, 300 hertz, 1000 hertz, 3000 hertz. Single sideband generally is set up for 2700 hertz. Uh, most, most sideband rigs are somewhere between 2700 and 3000 hertz. So what we see with this one is that we've got a peak at 300 hertz, then it starts rolling off. At 1000 hertz, we're down uh, 15 dB. Remembering that 10 dB is 10 times the power at, uh, at 2,000 hertz, we're down 20 dB, and at 3,000 hertz, we're down even farther. So when we play that voice, when you listen to that voice, that's what we're hearing. This is 9 Victor 1. You hear a real bassy voice. Now, that's good maybe if you're, uh, uh, if you're in a disco or if you're a DJ, but on sideband, that doesn't work very much because it means most of the power of my voice is in the lower frequencies, which aren't going to reproduce that well and aren't going to punch through the QRM on, on single sideband. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do what's called equalizing it. And we're going to try to set the levels so that the level within the sideband passband, which is about 250 hertz to 2700 hertz, we want the microphone to produce the same level from my voice across that entire frequency range. And this is how we do that. So we click on the equalize button, and the equalizer here was preset. So um, that's going to be no good. Let's hit a reset. Let's see what we've got. There we go. Okay, so this is what this is what the microphone looks like, and you can see that as the voice is playing back. As the voice is playing back, the line is the instantaneous value, but this green pattern is the average value over time. And that's very useful. Because what I can do here is, remember my objective is to make this nice and flat. So I can go out here at uh, 2700 hertz and I can grab this and I can pull this up until that average goes up there. Goes up and looks almost flat. And I'm gonna pull this one up here. Let me turn that down a minute and, uh, and we'll see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna reduce the response down here You'd like to have a few more handles in here, but for, for our purposes, this is going to be more than good enough. All right, so our objective here is, regardless of the absolute level, we want to get this as flat as possible across that pass band. Okay, now, let's listen to it. Okay, so you might say, well, that doesn't sound very good, but, uh, you know, in general, sideband doesn't sound very good. And the key of sideband is not voice fidelity. The key is 
to provide peak power and to punch through noise and QRM. So the key is intelligibility. We don't want me necessarily to sound like um, a golden-toned DJ. What we want is me to punch through QRM to, to get through noise, to get through interfering stations so that my voice can be heard and understood. So by maximizing the power in that 250 to 2700 hertz uh, pass band, what we've done is maximize the power across that span and presumably maximize the intelligibility. So, well, how do we know that? Well, Alex sort of took care of that too. So we go back to the screen here. Let me turn it up again so you can hear the loop. This is Well, before I turn that up, let me show you the button. See this button? Here it says add noise. So if I click add noise, I can add noise or I can add interference. Down here, what it's telling me is that right now, we, uh, the noise that we're adding, or our signal is being heard about 5 dB above the noise. Let's see, or 3 dB. Let's see what that sounds like. Turn it up. Now, I can, I can reduce that noise. I can take it all the way out. So I can I can simulate any level of noise that I want, and then I can check how well my signal punches through that noise. So here I'm setting it at about uh, even with the noise. Let's see, if, let's listen. Not too good, huh? I know there's a signal there. I'm not sure that I could pick it out if it was somebody that I really wanted to work on DX, I'd probably try. But uh, it's not very pleasant to listen to and not easy to understand. So we got some more tricks in the bag here. All right, so let's, let's turn that back up and let's put in what we call the gate compressor. And there are, there are several functions here, so I'm gonna select that. Now listen to what happened. Now I'm only 4 dB above the noise, and that's quite intelligible, quite a difference. Here, let's, let me switch it on now. And that is roughly the same peak power in each case, but the average power is much higher because we're doing something called compression. So for compression, to set compression up, we've got to go to another screen. We go to the clipper screen. And when we turn on compression, we get a very complex looking screen here. I'm going to turn it down here a minute, and, and let's explain what's on this screen. There are several controls here. Down at the bottom, we're seeing my voice move, the, the recorded loop voice. We're seeing the absolute level of that voice, and the red dot is the average level. This parameter, called the gate, this says I'm going to cut off everything that is below that, below that uh, setting. So let me turn it back up again. Let me move the gate, and you'll see what happens. If I move the gate way up here, absolutely nothing is getting through. If I move the gate down here, as I move it down, more and more of the signal is getting through. What you use the gate for is if you're in a noisy location, like here I have my air conditioner running. So when in between the pauses of my voice, there's background noise. Uh, if you have a linear running, there's fan noise. Um, that's pretty distracting on the other end. Uh, and so what we do here is we say, once I stop talking, basically turn the microphone off. That's what the gate does. All right, so gate's not so important though. What's really important here are two things called clipping and compression. So up here is the parameter called clip. I can take the clip all the way out, which means that everything that I say is transmitted. As I move the clip this direction, I start cutting off, just chopping off the high voice peaks. Doesn't sound like that would be a good deal, and it's not if you go too far with it, but the very the human voice in a live microphone has very, very high power peaks. And those peaks, if you reduce your system gain enough so that those peaks don't overmodulate the transmitter, then 
uh, your average level is so low that you, you just can't be heard. So what a clipper does is cut off those peaks and allow you to run the average modulation much higher and it gives you the ability to raise your average power level out on, on sideband. So let me show you the effect of no clip and then increasingly putting the clip in. You can listen to it and see what it does. There's no clip. Now I'm going to gradually pull the clip in. Now that last is obviously where I've gone too far. And um, if you listen to the 75 meter rag chews at night, um, you'll hear a lot of guys that go too far. That has a couple of impacts. First of all, it starts to get your voice to the point where it's less intelligible, not more, and it's very tiring to listen to, but worse than that, you start splattering. And you may not know it, because when you when your, your listener is listening to you, they're listening with a very sharp filter, a three kilohertz filter roughly, and so they're listening to your voice. And your voice, even though it may sound bad, is staying within that three kilohertz. If they were to tune off three kilohertz on either side, and the signal was like that, you would hear a lot of splatter. And so that makes for bad neighbors on a crowded band. So what we want to do here is, is take a reasonable average. And this is an art, not a science. So where I typically like to run mine is about 10 dB of clipping. 10 to 15 dB, maybe 15 dB of clipping. That's 15 dB of clipping. And that's a signal that's 3 dB above the noise. So that's given us some penetrating ability. Let me turn it, let me turn it off. You can barely hear it. Let me turn it back on. And it's getting through that noise. If I take the noise out, again, we're, we don't, at this point, we don't have a broadcast quality sounding signal, but we do have a signal that's going to punch through QRM. So we got one more trick up our bag and then we'll cut this off. Something called compression. So here we take the range of levels that is left over after we've clipped off the top, we take what's left and we squeeze them together. And this again has the effect of raising the average power that's being transmitted by your transmitter. This, by the way, if you're not careful, will make those uh, plates in your final amplifier glow red hot, or in my case, um, make the heat sink too hot to touch on my transmitter. So let me show you the effect of compression. Let's turn it back up where we were. We're at 15 dB of clipping. We're at one to one compression. I'm going to leave the noise out so you can hear the effect for the moment. And I'm going to start to raise the compression from one to one. To two to one, to three to one, the maximum is 15 to one. Now at 15 to one, what you hear is it sounds like you're inside a very loud barrel and that's no good either. Typically I like to run mine somewhere between two to one to three to one. Uh, not a lot of compression. Uh, because I, I like the liveliness of the voice. So here's here's two to one compression. Oh, wrong now. Two to one compression. With no noise. Now let's dump some noise in there. So that's the same level of noise. We'll get in here so you can hear it. And if I take out the compression and the uh, clipping, it almost disappears. If I take out the equalization, it does disappear. You, all you can hear is a rumble back there. So that's how we set it up. And that's how we make a $12 microphone sound like a million bucks. This is Nine Victor One Tango Delta. Have a good day.